Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one, Dan? We're on to Thor Ragnarok. I can't imagine what's gone wrong here, but I guess there's only one way to find out, guys. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. Okay, so tell me about this Thor script. Right, so it's called Ragnarok. Bless you. No, Ragnarok <laughs> basically means the apocalypse on Asgard. Oh. What's wrong? It's just that it sounds pretty dark and we're looking for kind of a lighter tone here. Oh no, this is a straight up comedy. It is? Yeah, literally any like moment it. that could potentially be a little dramatic is either turned into or followed by a joke. So you can't really take anything seriously at all. Not really, no. Perfect, because we have a comedy director we really want to work with on this. Who's that? Taika Waititi? Bless you. That's not... <laughs> no. So tell me about the new direction you're taking the Thor character in. Right, so what I did was take Chris Hemsworth from Thor. Okay. Then I took Chris Hemsworth from Ghostbusters. Right. And I kind of just squished them into one character. Amazing. So he's a lot dumber now. Oh yeah, he's oh, a no. lot dumber. Like the movie starts with him talking to a skeleton. Oh, like as a joke? Kinda, but there's also nobody else around, so it's like, who's he doing this bit for? So it just comes across as dumb. Exactly, so it's like either Thor is very stupid or it's a really lazy joke that doesn't actually make sense in the scene. It's Leading not the second one. one, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so listen, before oh, we no. get too deep into the story, we do have to address a big plot thread from the last Thor movie. Loki. Yeah, he's impersonating his father and ruling Asgard. I imagine it's gonna be pretty hard for Thor to deal with. Actually, super easy. Barely, barely an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, what happens? Well, Thor gets back to Asgard and he figures it out. That's like the first thing he does. <laughs> wow. Taken care of, just like that. So tell me about the story. Right, so the main villain in the movie is called Hela, and she's the goddess of death. Okay, now the main complaint about our movies is that the villains are kind of flat and one-dimensional, so what's Hela's deal? Oh, you're gonna like this. Basically, Hela's deal is that she is evil. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, she's like um, super evil. Very, very evil. <laughs> Sounds like the perfect villain. Yeah, and she wants to take over Asgard, so she does. She she does that. Very evil. And she's really strong, so she does it pretty easily, too. Like, she kills Thor's best friends like it was nothing. Oh, but Thor's gonna be devastated. You'd think so, but we're never gonna see him react to it, or, like, even find out. Yeah, because that would be dramatic. Yeah, I really can't overstate how much potential drama we're gonna avoid here. That's what we want. Like, in the middle of a spaceship battle, they're gonna talk about orgies. Great. Thor's what? whole relationship <laughs> with Jane is like a throwaway joke now. Oh, she was important, too. Yeah, super important. Wow. Also, Bruce Banner probably dies, but it's like really funny. Wait, Bruce Banner is in this? Oh yeah, I didn't tell you. The Hulk is like a big part of this movie. Interesting. Yeah, but instead of being a scary monster, now he's like a moody baby. A moody baby? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, he talks like one and everything. Hey, that's what the people ask for. Is it? I have no idea. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> Thor ends up on a gladiator a planet, maybe? and most of the movie is them trying to leave with Valkyrie. Who's Valkyrie? Oh, she's actually from Asgard, and she's fought Hela before. And she's on the gladiator planet, too? Yeah, she's the one who picks Thor up when he lands there. That sounds pretty convenient. Oh, it's super convenient. Hmm. Yeah, so they go back to Asgard, then they get a demon thing to blow the whole place up, and that's, that's it. That's it? Can I see that? Sure. Thank you. Most of these pages are empty. Yeah, well, when I was writing, they were playing a <laughs> Whose Line Is It Anyway marathon on TV, so I got a little distracted. Great show. But it got me thinking, why don't we just let the actors come up with a lot of this stuff and just kind of end every scene with Thor getting zapped unconscious? Please, oh, no. improv. I love it. Yeah, and it should be fun, too, because you know how most movies have, like, one character that's the comic relief to break the tension? Mm-hmm. That's going to be, like, every single character in this movie. Oh, Everybody. No. Yeah, yeah, like, there's a character who's a pile of rocks. Funniest guy in the film. Hey, there's a page here that just says Goldblum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a character called Grandmaster that I didn't really know how to develop. Oh, so you want me to get Jeff Goldblum to come be Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, I figured that would take care of that. That's smart. I'll see what I can do. Mm. Also, you'll see there's a page in there that just says the word cameo. Yep. I just thought it'd be really fun to have a super, super famous person show up for, like, no reason at all. For no reason at all. Exactly. So people in the audience will be like, hey, isn't that... Why is he... Why is he in this? I know just the guy to call. Awesome. Matt Damon. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with? Nobody's surprised by that. You know, they're not wrong. That movie really did feel very improv. It felt a little bit too comedic considering the dark title of it. Yeah. Because ultimately, you, Ragnarok does happen. You do lose your homeland. A bunch of characters die. Characters who have been you know, part of this Marvel Universe through several films. And they were just kind of like, eh. Life goes on. Especially Thor. Like, these were these were your best buddies. They've been with you through hell. And no emotion for, for them whatsoever? Mm-mm. We're just supposed to laugh at their death? That's not laughable. No. Like, they died like heroes. They were out there trying to save their city. That's too bad. I think they deserve much better than that when we I, get down to I it. I think they did, too. I never thought about it like that until just now. And, of course, you have, you know, 
Carl Urban's character in there who's just going crazy at every opportunity. And like, don't get me wrong, I like Carl Urban, but it's like, did you need his character there for this? The only thing I know about his character is that he was indeed a part of the comics. I just don't know if this is how he, his capacity was shown. So, you got me. I don't either. So, like I said, I'm not a big comic reader. Right. I don't know, especially Thor, I don't know a whole lot about the, the uh, lore there. But I remember now where Matt Damon's character was mm -hmm. in this. Uh, he was there at the beginning after Thor came back, and he was playing Loki in that little play for, for Odin that oh, was being okay. portrayed by Loki. Is, yeah, okay. that was Matt Damon. So. Actually, I should think I remember that now. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't even think of his role until you just brought it up. It was a very stupid moment, because it's like, wait, so you're playing Loki, and Loki's impersonating Odin right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you got an actor to play an actor. Yes, so be it. <laughs> yeah, the movie overall was kind of goofy. And don't get me wrong, I'm not afraid of, you know, these movies having some fun. Like we were talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, they have a lot of fun with those movies too, and it works fine. In this, you're kind of going back and forth because sometimes you're really serious. You know, there's a lot of real family drama going on there. And then you turn around, it's just like, oh, you know, we're bunch of, just a bunch of drunk vikings going out having fun that's what it seemed like very inconsistent tone yeah really this was just all about cheap laughs yeah it's kind of taika waititi's thing though is try to is to you know he's all about the com the comedy aspect of it all mm -hmm. we saw that in what we do in the shadows mm -hmm. certainly now that movie was tailor-made for taika waititi though yeah because that was just a straight-up comedy it, was, yeah. it wasn't meant to be serious at any point no, but, but this had a serious title, and it turned out to be anything but. And, and there are very serious stakes in here, but it's not treated that way. No. There are moments there where it feels like it could get treated that way, mm -hmm. but then they go down the opposite way. Like, soon as Thor loses his hammer, he gets, he gets blown across the universe into another dimension, practically. And immediately, you get introduced to Jeff Goldblum's character, mm -hmm. who's a complete goofball. And then you got the Hulk there, who apparently doesn't remember him at all. Mm -hmm. And he can get beaten up by girls now. Big time. Yeah. No explanation to that whatsoever. And that girl can whip Thor's ass too. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of people said they enjoyed the movie when it came out. It was it was funny, and I th think it's because we didn't give any thought to it. I think that's fair. Time. I mean, yes, there are aspects of the film that are enjoyable, but I think if you look at it, you know, critically, there are some issues there that needed to be resolved. I think. You're right. Honestly, I wish we were still in that mindset that we didn't have to give any thought to these things. Mm -hmm. But so much bad stuff has come out in both the MCU and in the Star Wars universe Yeah, that just keeps like piling on crap after crap after another. And it's like now that they come out with another thing, your eyes are, all, are kind of focused on how bad is this going to be. Yeah. So this is the thing I love about these pitch meetings. They really point out how they don't really seem to learn or do anything different with their stuff. It's like so many of these Marvel films has been the same plot rehashed with different characters. Right. And though we're seeing the same thing with Star Wars 2 is they keep trying to use the same old ideas instead of actually trying to build upon the universe that they're in. Or when they do try to build upon it, they build upon it in like stupid ways that make no sense. That's true. And it's just, it's some better writing. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> I mean, come on. A lot can be solved with that, guys. And you can, and you could probably get away with a lot less budget with really good writing. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe one day. We'll see. But in the meantime, fam, uh, we're just going to throw this one to you guys. Let us know what you thought of this movie. Uh, at the time, I thought it was awesome, but now, to me, it's like, now that my eyes have kind of adjusted to everything else, mm -hmm. I'm in that camp where it's like, it's no better than anything else now. It's just so, mediocre. Yeah. But we're going to leave it there for now, guys. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. And should you want to support the channel, consider joining and becoming a member, guys. We would love to have you, but it's not required. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Bye.